Hi everyone, welcome to Engineered Math. In this video, I will teach you about solving linear equations. So for this particular topic, we're gonna solve linear equations in one variable. Meaning we will consider a single variable in the equation. So it can be x, y, z, or any letter of the alphabet. As long as its highest exponent is 1, since we're dealing with linear equation. So linear equations are basically solved using the different properties of equality like addition property of equality, subtraction property of equality, multiplication property of equality, division property of equality, distributive property, etc. But I will just teach you a shortcut method in solving linear equations that is using transposition. So let's say we have the equation x plus 1 is equal to 5. So the variable that I use here is x. So x can be any number that satisfies this equation. So if you try to ask yourself, what number plus 1 is equal to 5? So we know that 4 plus 1 is equal to 5. So therefore, we can conclude that x can be equal to 4, right? But how can we arrive at the value of x equal to 4 using the traditional method of solving a linear equation? So basically, the goal here is to isolate the variable on one side of the equation and the constants on the other side of the equation. So that is, we can have the variable, in our case x, to be on the right or to be on the left side alone. And when I say it is on one side of the equation, it means that it has no other terms in it. Also, there is no other number multiplied to this unknown variable than 1. So in algebra, if there is no numerical coefficient for a variable, it automatically means that it is multiplied by 1. So our goal is to make the numerical coefficient or the number multiplied to x is just 1. So we cannot have... 2, 3, 4, etc. And even negative x. So, if there's still a numerical coefficient on x or any number multiplied to x, we must get rid of that also. Which I will teach you also later. Okay? So, from this, we see that on the left side, we have x plus 1. And on the right side, we have 5. So, if you want to isolate x... It's up to us if we want x to be on the right or to be on the left side of the equation. So let's say I'll isolate x on the left side of the equation. So meaning, we must get rid of the plus 1 term so that x will be left alone on the left side. So to do that, we can do the transposition. That is, we can transfer a number or even a variable from one side of the equation to another by actually moving that number and reversing its sign. So we can transpose positive 1 to the right. So we can have now x is equal to 5. And transposing 1 to the right, we can write 1 on the right side. Changing its sign from on the left, it is positive 1 right. But since we have transposed it to the right side, it must now become negative. So since x is already isolated on the left side, we simply perform the operation on the right side, which is 5 minus 1 or Four. So therefore, we also get the value of x equal to 4. Okay? Next, this time, let's say we have x minus 5 is equal to 4. So again, if you try to ask yourself, what number minus 5 is equal to 4? So we know that 9 minus 5 is equal to 4. So we can say that x is equal to 9. So solving this equation traditionally, let's apply what we did on the first example. So let's try to isolate x on the left side alone. Therefore, I need to transpose negative 5 to the right. So I will now have x is equal to 4. Then transposing negative 5 from left to right, it will now become positive 5 on the right side. So we have x is equal to 4 plus 5 or 9, which is the same as what we expect. Okay, next, what if we have this time 4x is equal to 12? So as we can see in this example, we only have 4x on the left side and a constant on the right side. 
So unlike on the previous examples, we don't have a positive or a negative number added to the left side. So therefore, we have already isolated the x variable on the left side. So we don't need to do transposition. But this time, x has a numerical coefficient of 4. Or there is a number multiplied to x, which is 4. If that is the case, like what I've said a while ago, we must get rid of that number and we need to make the numerical coefficient of x only equal to 1. So we can have x only on the left side. We must cancel out the 4 in x. So to do that, we must divide both sides of the equation by 4. So whenever there is a numerical coefficient or a number multiplied to x, we can get rid of that by dividing x by that number. So in an equation, if we multiply or divide one side of the equation by a constant, therefore it should be done also on the left. Actually, it's also applicable in addition or subtraction a constant on one side. But I didn't teach you about that for addition and subtraction, but we just use transposition. Nevertheless, transposition and addition or subtracting a constant on both sides of the equations are the same. Okay? So, that's why we divide both sides of the equation by 4 to get rid of x. So doing it, we now have on the left side, 4x divided by 4 is canceling out 4. We will be left at x equal to 12 divided by 4 is 3. So therefore, the answer is 3. So we can also check our answer if x is equal to 3 really satisfies the equation. So try to substitute x is equal to 3 in 4x is equal to 12. So we have 4. So substituting x, we have 4 times 3 is equal to 12. So 4 times 3 is 12 equal to 12. So therefore, x is equal to 3 is really the solution to this equation. Next, let's say we have this time x over 3 is equal to 9. So just like on the previous example, there's no term added or subtracted on the left side. So we are only left at x over 3 on the left side. So we don't need to do transposition also. But as you can see, x is divided by 3 as denoted by over 3, right? So therefore, the numerical coefficient of x is not 1, but it is actually 1 third, right? Because 1 third x is also the same as dividing x by 3. So we must get rid of that numerical coefficient 1 third so that we can have on the left side to be x alone. So to do that, this time we must multiply both sides of the equation by 3. So whenever x is divided by a constant, we can get rid of that constant on the denominator by multiplying x by that same number. So doing it, we can now multiply 3 times x over 3. So we can cancel 3 on the numerator and 3 on the denominator. We now have x is equal to 9 times 3, which is 27. So therefore, x is equal to 27. So if we try to check, substitute x in the original equation, x over 3 is equal to 9. So we have 27 over 3 is equal to 9. 27 divided by 3 is 9 is equal to 9. So therefore, x is equal to 27 satisfies the equation. Next, let's say we have 2x plus 1 is equal to 3. Okay, so let's say we want to isolate x on the left side. So I will need to transpose positive 1 to the right. So we have 2x is equal to 3 minus 1. Or 2x is equal to performing the operation 3 minus 1, it is equal to 2. Now since x has still numerical coefficient of 2, we must get rid of that by dividing both sides of the equation by 2. So therefore, we can cancel 2, leaving x on the left side equal to 2 divided by 2 equals 1. So therefore, the value of x is 1. So if we try to check, we can substitute x is equal to 1 to the original equation. So 2x plus 1 is equal to 3. Substitute x is equal to 1. So 2 times 1 plus 1 is equal to 3. So we have 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is equal to 3. 2 plus 1 is 3 is equal to 3. So therefore, x is equal to 1 satisfies the equation. Next, let's say we have x over 5 minus 6 is equal to negative 
5. Okay, if we try to isolate x on the left side, we can have x over 5 and then try to transpose negative 6 to the right. So we have x over 5 equal to negative 5. From negative 6, it will be positive 6 on the right. Okay, then we can perform negative 5 plus 6 on the right. So we have x over 5 is equal to negative 5 plus 6 is positive 1. Now we see that x has a denominator of 5. So we can get rid of that by multiplying both sides of the equation by 5. So therefore, canceling 5 on the left side, we have x is equal to 1 times 5 or 5. So therefore, the value of x is equal to 5. Next, let's say we have 6 minus x is equal to 4. So again, if we try to isolate x on the left side, we can have negative x is equal to transposing positive 6 to the right. We can have 4 minus 6. So we have negative x is equal to 4 minus 6 is negative 2. So as we can see, we still have a negative sign on x, meaning that it doesn't have yet a numerical coefficient of 1. But instead, negative x means it has a numerical coefficient of negative 1. So keep that in mind that if we have negative x, it means that x is multiplied by negative 1. So therefore, we still can get rid of that negative 1 numerical coefficient, right? Remember, what we need is numerical coefficient of 1. So we can divide both sides by negative 1. So we can cancel out the negative 1 of x. So therefore, we have on the left, x is equal to negative 2 divided by negative 1 or positive 2. Okay? Next, let's say we have 2x over 3 plus 1 is equal to 3. So again, if we try to isolate x on the left, we can have 2x over 3. Then transposing positive 1 to the right, we have equals 3 minus 1. So simplifying the right side, 2x over 3 is equal to 3 minus 1 is 2. So as we can see, we have a denominator of 3 on x. So we can get rid of that by multiplying both sides of the equation by 3. So we can cancel out 3 on the left side. So we will be left at 2x equal to 2 times 3 is 6. Now, we're not yet done because x has still a numerical coefficient of 2. So to get rid of that, we must divide both sides of the equation by 2. So canceling out 2 on the left, we have x is equal to 6 divided by 2 or 3. So therefore, the value of x is 3. Now let's say we have 3x plus 1 equals 5x minus 2. So this time, on both sides of the equation, we have x terms, right? So we have 3x on the left and 5x on the right, as well as we have plus 1 on the left and minus 2 on the right. So again, let's try to isolate x on one side of the equation. So let's say we want to isolate x on the left side, and therefore all the constants on the right side. So we need to keep 3x on the left side, and we need to transpose 5x on the left, so it will become negative 5x now on the left side. Equal, we need to keep negative 2 on the right, and we transpose positive 1 to the right, so it will become minus 1. Now, on the left side, we have 3x minus 5x. So we can actually combine these two terms on the left side, which is 3x minus 5x, as a single term by combining the numerical coefficients of each x. So since we have 3 and negative 5, it means that we are adding 3 plus negative 5, or it is equal to negative 2, right? So therefore, we just write negative 2, and put beside that negative 2, the variable x. So we now have negative 2x on the left equal to negative 2 minus 1 on the right. It is equal to negative 3. So to cancel out the negative 2 on x on the left, we can divide both sides by negative 2. So we can have x is equal to negative 3 over negative 2 or simply 3 over 2. 
because we cannot divide 3 over 2 exactly, right? So therefore, we have x is equal to 3 halves. Next, let's say we have 2 times x plus 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. Okay, as you can see, in this example, we have a quantity inside the parenthesis, which is x plus 2, multiplied by 2. So, if we are given this type of equation, we must get rid of the parenthesis first, or the grouping symbol, by performing the multiplication. So, it means that we need to distribute 2 to every term inside the parenthesis. So, when we distribute, it means we multiply that 2 to every term in the parenthesis. So, we have 2x or 2 times x plus 2 times 2. Okay? Then, copying the remaining of the expression, plus 3 is equal to 5. Then, we need to simplify first the constants. So, 2x plus 2 times 2 is 4, plus 3 is equal to 5. Then, 2x, combining 4 plus 3, we have positive 7 equals 5. Now, we can isolate 2x on the left side. So, we can have 2x and then transposing positive 7 to the right, we have 5 minus 7. Then, 2x now is equal to 5 minus 7 is negative 2. Dividing both sides by 2 to solve for x, we have x is equal to negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. So, therefore, the value of x is negative 1. Okay, so that's how to solve linear equations. So, I hope you learned something from this video and thank you for watching.